St. Genevieve, Virginis, 512, Lutetia, Parisiorum. Here followeth the life of St. Genevieve. The noble St. Genevieve was born at Nanterre, beside Paris, in the time of the Emperor Honorius and Theodosius the Less, and was with her father and mother unto the time of the Emperor Valentinian. And in after her nativity, the Holy Ghost showed unto St. Germain of Auxerre how she should serve God holily and virginly, the which thing he told to many. After, she was sacred of the Bishop of Chartres, Velix, and came to dwell at Paris full of virtues and of miracles, in the time of St. Nicasius the Martyr, whom the Hungarians martyred, and after, in the time of St. Remigius under Childeric, King of France, and after, under Clovis's son, first Christian King of France, and was named Louis in his baptism, whom St. Remigius christened. And an angel of paradise brought to him an ample full of chrism of which he was anointed, and also his successors, kings of France, be anointed and sacred at their coronation. And after, he was of good life, and founded the church that is now called St. Genevieve, on the Mount of Paris, in the honor of St. Peter and St. Paul, at the request of St. Clotilda's wife, of whom the body resteth in the said church, at the incitation of St. Genevieve, and St. Remigius did hallow and de defeat. it. The said king did increase much the realm of France, and franchised it by his puissance from the Romans. He conquered Melun, and the land lying by Saini and Loire, Train, Toulouse, and Algin, and at his coming to Angoulême the walls of the city fell down. He made Almain and Bourgogne his tributaries, he ordained and instituted Paris to be the chief siege of the realm, and he reigned thirty years, and after, he was interred in the said church, the year of our Lord 514. In the time of the said king lived the said virgin, unto the time of King Clotar his son, of which virgin the soul flew into heaven and the body abode in earth, in the said church, in which she is yet whole and honorably interred, and devoutly worshipped by the good and devout Christian people. In the time that the said virgin Saint Genevieve was a child, Saint Germain of Auxer and Saint Lou of Troyes, elect of the prelates of France, for to go quench a heresy that was in Great Britain, now called England, came to Nanterre for to be lodged and harbored, the people came against them for to have their benison. Among the people, Saint Germain, by the insanements of the Holy Ghost, espied out the little maid Saint Genevieve, and made her to come to him, and kissed her head and demanded her name, and whose daughter she was, and the people about her said that her name was Genevieve, and her father Severe, and her mother Gerons, which came unto him, and the holy man said, Is this child yours? They answered, Yea. Blessed be ye, said the holy man, when God hath given to you so noble lineage, know ye for certain that in the day of her nativity, the angels sang and hallowed great mystery in heaven with great joy and gladness. She shall be of so great merit against God. And of her good life and conversation many shall take in sample, that they shall leave their sin and shall convert them to God, and shall live religiously, by which they shall have pardon and joy perdurable. Then he said to Genevieve, My daughter tell to me, and be not ashamed, if ye will be sacred and live in virginity unto the death as a spouse of Jesus Christ. The maid answered, Holy Father, ye demand that I desire. There lacketh no more but that by your prayers our Lord will accomplish my devotion. The holy man said, Have firm belief in God, and prove by works the good things that ye believe in your heart and say with your mouth, and our Lord shall give you force and virtue. Saint Germain held his hand on her head till he came unto the minster, there he gave to the people the benison. Saint Germain said to the father and mother of the maid that they should bring her again on the morn to him. When she was brought again on the morn, Saint Germain saw in her a sign celestial, I wot not what, and said to her, God thee saluteth, Genevieve. Daughter, rememberest thou what thou premisedst to me yesterday of the virginity of thy body? Holy Father, said the maid, I remember well that, and by the help of God I desire and think to accomplish my purpose. Then the ho why man looked on the ground and saw a penny signed with the cross, which came by the grace and will of God. He took it up and gave it her and said, Fair daughter take this and bear it in mind of Jesus Christ your spouse, and suffer not about you none other arraignment of gold any silver, any of precious stones, for if the beauty of this world surmount a little your thought, ye shall lose the goods of heaven. 
he commended her to God, and prayed her that she would remember him in her orisons and prayers, and recommended her to father and mother. The two holy bishops went from thence into England, where were heretics against the faith, which said that children born of father and mother baptized had no need to be christened, which is not truth, for our Lord Jesus Christ saith clearly, in the gospel, that none may enter into the kingdom of heaven if he be not regenerate of water and of the Holy Ghost, that is to say, regenerate by the sacrament of baptism. By this scripture, and by semblable, the holy prelates destroyed their false creants and belief, and by virtue also and by miracles, for in a solemnity of Easter, by many that were new baptized, in singing Alleluia they chased and drove away their enemies of Scotland, and strangers of other places, that were come for to grieve them. It happened on a day that Gerons, the mother of the holy maid Genevieve, went on an holy and festal day toward the minster, and her daughter went after, saying that the faith that she had promised to Saint Germain she should keep by the help of God, and that she should oft go to the minster to the end that she might desire to be the espouse of Jesus Christ, and that she might be worthy of his love. The mother was angry and smote her on the cheek. God avenged the child that the mother became blind, and that in twenty-one months she saw not. When the mother had been long in this pain, which much annoyed her, she remembered of the goodness that Saint Germain had said of her daughter, and called her and said, My daughter, go to the pit and fetch me water. The maid went hastily. When she was at the pit she began to weep because her mother had lost her sight for her sake, and took up water and bare it to her mother. The mother stretched her hands to heaven, and took the water with great faith and reverence, and made her daughter to sign her with the sign of the Holy Cross and wash her eyes and Anna and she bade Anne for her to see a little. When she had twice or thrice washed, her sight came whole to her again as it had been to four. After this it happened that the holy maid was offered to the bishop of Chartres, Velix, for to be sacred with two other elder maidens. For men offered them after their age. But the holy bishop knew by the Holy Ghost that Genevieve was the most worthy in D.I.G.N.E., and said to her, that was behind, that she should come before for God had then sanctified her. After the death of her father and her mother the holy damsel came and dwelt at Paris for to essay and prove her there, and for to avail the more she was sick of the palsy, so much that it seemed that her members were disjoined and departed that one from that other, whereof she was so sore tormented that during three days she was kept as for dead, for there appeared on her no sign of life save that her hose were a little red. In this space and time, as she confessed after, an angel led her in spirit whereas the rest was of good folk, and where the torment was of evil people. Afterward she showed to many the secrets of their consciences, as she that was taught an insane of the Holy Ghost. The second time Saint Germain returned from England and came to Paris the people almost all went against him with great joy, and before all other things Saint Germain demanded how Genevieve did, but the people, which more is inclined to say evil of good people than well, answered that of her was nothing in blaming her, which was to her praising. Of other men's praising is none the better, any of others blaming is none the worse, therefore the holy man said not of their jangling, but as soon as he entered into the city he went straight to the house of the holy virgin whom he saluted in so great humility that all they marveled, and showed to them that dispraised her, the ground wet of her tears, and recited to them the beginning of her life, and how he found it Nanterre that she was chosen of God, and recommended her to the people. Tidings came to Paris that Attila, the felon king of Hungary, had enterprised to destroy and waste the parts of France, and to subdue them to his domination. The burgesses of Paris, for great dread that they had, sent their goods into other cities more sure. Saint Genevieve warned and admonished the good women of the town that they should wake in fastings and in orisons, by which they might assuage the ire of our Lord and eschew the tyranny of their enemies like as did sometime the two holy women Judith and Esther. They obeyed her, and were long and many days in the church in wakings, fastings and in orisons. She said to the burgesses that they should not remove their goods, and he sent them out of the town of Paris, for the other cities that they supposed should be more sure, should be destroyed and wasted, but by the grace of God, Paris should have none harm. And, some had indignation at her and said that a false prophet was risen and appeared in their time, and began among them to ask and treat whether they should drown her or stone her. Whilst they were thus treating, as God would, came to Paris, 
after the decease of St. Germain, the Archdeacon of Augsburg, and when he understood that they treated together of her death, he came to them, and said, Fair sirs, for God's sake do not this mischief, for she of whom ye treat, St. Germain witnesseth that she was chosen of God in her mother's belly, and lo! Here be the letters that he hath sent to her in which he recommendeth him to her prayers. When the Burgesses heard these words recited by him of St. Germain, and saw the letters, they marveled and feared God, and left their evil counsel and did no more thereto. Thus our Lord kept her from harm, which keepeth alway them that be is, and defendeth, after that the Apostle saith, and for her love did so much that the tyrants approached not Paris, thank and glory to God and honor to the Virgin. This holy maid did great penance in tormenting her body all her life, and became lean for to give good example. For sith she was of the age of fifteen years unto fifty, she fasted every day save Sunday and Thursday. In her refection she had nothing but barley bread, and sometime beans, the which, sardin after fourteen days or three weeks, she ate for all delices. Always she was in prayers and wakings and in penances, she drank never wine any other liquor that might make her drunk, in all her life. When she had lived and used this life fifty years, the bishops that were that time, saw and beheld that she was over feeble by abstinences for her age, and warned her to increase a little her fare. The holy woman durst not gainsay them, for our Lord saith of the prelates, Who heareth you heareth me, and who despiseth you, despiseth me, and so she began by obedience to eat with her bread, fish and milk, and how well that, she sowed it, she beheld the heaven and wept, whereof it is to believe that she saw apparently our Lord Jesus Christ after the promise of the gospel that saith that, Blessed be they that be clean of heart for they shall see God. She had her heart and body pure and clean. There be twelve virtues virginal, saith Hermes pastor, without which no virgin may be agreeable to God, that is to wit, faith, abstinence, patience, magnanimity, simplice, innocence, concord charity, discipline, chastity, truth, and prudence. These virtues accomplished the Holy Virgin by work, she taught an insane by word, and showed off by example. Often before all other holy places, she visited the place where has rested St. Denis and his fellows, and had great devotion to edify upon the said holy bodies a church, but she had not whereof. On a time came to her the priests, as oft they had done to four, to whom she said, Reverend fathers in God, I pray and require that each of you do his power and his devoir to assemble matter whereof might be made and edified a church in the honor of the glorious martyrs St. Denis and his fellows, for the place where they rest ought much to be worshipped and doubted, which first taught to our ancestors the faith. Dame, answered the priests, we would fain, and have great will or two, but we can get no chalk any a lime. Then said the Holy Virgin with a glad cheer and prophesying as she that was replenished by the Holy Ghost, Go ye I pray you to Paris upon the great bridge, and bring that ye shall find there. They went thither and abode there a while, marveled and abashed. An Annan came by them two swine ere speaking together, of which that one said, As I went yesterday after one of my sows, I found a fornal of lime marvelously great, that other answered and I found in the wood under the root of a tree that the wind had thrown down a fornal of lime of which I trow was never none taken away. When the priests heard this they had great admiration, and blessed our Lord that he had given such grace to Genevieve his handmaid. They demanded where the fornials were, and after returned and told to the virgin what they had found. She began to weep for joy, and as soon as the priests were gone and departed, she sat on her knees and was all the night in orisons and in tears in requiring help of God to perform this work, and on the morn early, all mad and travailed of waking, she went to Genes, a good priest, and prayed him that he would do his pain and labor that the church might be edified, and told him tidings of the lion. When Genes heard this he was all a marveled, and fell down to her feet, and promised to her that night and day he would do his labor to accomplish her commandment. By the help of God and of Saint Genevieve, and of the people of Paris, the said church was begun in the honor of the blessed martyrs St. Denis, St. Rustique, and St. Eloy there which now is called St. Denis de Lestri. There be yet the holy bodies where our Lord showeth fair miracles, for as the workmen intended to make the edifice each after his craft, it happed that their drink failed and was done, and Janus the priest said to Genevieve, 
which knew not hereof, that she should talk with the workman so long that he might go to Paris and fetch drink. When she heard this she demanded for the vessel that they had emptied, and it was brought to her. She made them to depart from her. Then she kneeled down on her knees and prayed God with warm tears to help her, and when she felt that our Lord had heard her prayer, she arose up, and made the sign of the cross upon the said vessel, and a marvelous thing happed, for the vessel was full. The workmen drank their bellyful, and as oft as they would, unto the time the church was perfectly made, whereof they thanked our Lord. The Holy Virgin had devotion to wait the night that our Lord rose from death to life, after the custom and statutes of ancient fathers. It happed on a time that she put her on the way, to four day, to go to the said church of St. Denis, and made to bear a candle burning before her. The night was dark, the wind great, and it rained fast, which quenched the light of the candle. The maidens that were in her company were sore troubled. She asked after the candle, and as soon as she had it in her hand it was lighted by God's will again, and so she bare it burning unto the church. Another time when she had ended her prayer, a candle that she held, lighted in her hand by the grace of God. Semblably in her cell, on the time was a candle lighted in her hand without any fire of this world, of which candle many sick folk by their faith and reverence have been healed. That taper is kept yet at Notre Dame de Paris. A woman which by the temptation of the devil, which to his power always deceiveth the good, stole away her shoes, but as soon as she was at home she lost her sight. When she saw that our Lord had avenged the wrong that she had done to the Virgin, she did her to be led to her with the theft. When she came to for the Holy Virgin she fell down to her feet, and required her of forgiveness and restoring of her sight. Genevieve, that was right debonair, took her up from the ground, and in smiling, gave to her the sight again of her eyes. The Holy Virgin on a time went to Laon, and the people of the town went out against her, among whom were the father and mother of a maid that had been nine years so paralytic that none might show the jointure of her members. They besought and required Saint Genevieve that she would visit the sick maid. She went and saw her, and Seth made her prayer as she was accustomed, and after, handled the members of the maid, and commanded her to do on her clothes and hosen and shoes. Incontinent she arose in good health in such wise that she went unto the church with the people. The folk that saw this, blessed our Lord, that he had given such grace to his damsel Genevieve, and when she returned they conveyed her, singing with great joy. The king of France, Childeric, howbeit he was a Paynim, held her in great reverence, so did also the barons of France, for the fair miracles that she did in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whereof it happed on a time that the said king held certain prisoners judged to death, but because Genevieve should not demand them, he issued out of Paris, and made to shut the gates after him. The Holy Virgin knew it and, and went hastily after him for to help to deliver them. As soon as she came to the gates, they opened without key, all the people seeing which, thought it a great wonder. She pursued the king and obtained grace for the prisoners. In the parts of the Orient beyond Antioch, was a good man named Simeon, which had despised this world, and was of marvelous holy life, which demanded of Saint Genevieve of the merchants that went into those parts, and by them he saluted her much honorably, and recommended him unto her prayers. It was a great marvel that the holy man, which had never seen any hurt speak of her did do greet her by her name. Verily the friends of God, that know his will and do thereafter, have tidings that one from that other by administration of the Holy Ghost, they shall never be separate any departed, as St. Ambrose being at Milan knew of the death of St. Martin at Tours. At Mo was a noble damsel which was named by her proper name Celine, which, when she had heard of the grace that God had given to St. Genevieve, she required her to change her habit. A young man had fianced and trothed her, which had great indignation when he heard of those tidings, and came to Mo in a great ire, where the two virgins dwelt. And when they knew of his coming they fled unto the church. There happed a fair miracle, for as they came to the church door, which was locked and fast shut, the door that was so locked opened by his grief by himself. Thus St. Genevieve delivered St. Celine from peril and from the contagion of the world, the which persevered in abstinence, and in chastity to her end. In this time the said Celine offered to St. Genevieve one, her chamber, which had lain sick two years and might not go. 
The Holy Virgin handled her members with her worthy hands and Anon she was whole and in good point. There were brought to her twelve men that were wooden beset with devils, unto Paris, which were over hard bested and tormented of the enemy. The Virgin had great pity, and went to prayer and orisons in requiring our Lord, with salt tears, that by his grace and goodness he would deliver them of this pestilence. And as she persevered in her prayers, they were hanged in the air in such manner as they touched nothing. She arose from her prayer, and said that they should go to St. Denis, the woodmen answered that they might not but she unbound them. The virgin which was for them in great sore commanded that they should go. Then Anon they suffered them to be led secretly, their hands bound behind their backs. She went after them, and when she was in the church of St. Denis, she stretched herself on the ground in orisons and in weepings. Thus as she persevered in prayers and weepings, the woodmen cried with a high voice that they approached whom the virgin called in to their help. None ought to doubt that the enemy, that saw that he must needs issue and go out, signified by the mouth of the demoniacs, that the apostles, martyrs and other saints, that the holy virgin called, came unto her help by the gift of God, which is ready to do the will of them that dread him and call him in truth. When the Holy Virgin heard this that they said, she arose up and blessed each after other with the sign of the cross, and then and they were delivered of the enemies. They that were present felt so great stench that they doubted nothing but the souls were delivered from the vexation of the devil, and blessed our Lord for this miracle. There was at Burgess a damsel, which heard speak of the great enemy of this holy saint, and came to Paris for to speak to her. She had been sacred, but after the consecration she had lost her virginity. The holy Genevieve demanded of her if she was a virgin nun, or wife, or a widow. She answered that she was a virgin sacred. Genevieve said nay, telling to her the place and time of her defloration and the man that had done the fate. When she saw that it was for not that she said she was a virgin, her conscience remorsed her, and fell down to her feet and requiring pardon. In semblable wise the holy Genevieve discovered to many the secrets of their consciences, which be not here written because it were over noise and long to write. A woman whom the Holy Virgin had healed, had a child of the age of four years which fell in a pit, he was there in the space of three hours. The mother came and drew it out, and bare it all dead unto the saint, in rending her hair and beating her breast and paps, and weeping bitterly, and laid the child dead at her feet. The Holy Virgin covered it with her mantle, and after, she fell down in her prayers and wept, and Anna and after, when she ceased of her weeping, our Lord showed a fair miracle, for the child that was dead revived, the which was baptized at Easter after, and was named Selenir because she was raised in the cell of St. Genevieve. There came from Mo a man to this holy virgin which had his hand dried unto the wrist, and she handled his joints and fingers, and made thereon the sign of the cross, and Anna and the hand became all whole. Genevieve that knew well, that our Lord Jesus Christ was baptized the day of Epiphany, and after, went into desert and giving insanement to them that be regenerate in the sacrament of baptism, to fast, wake and adore busily, and to accomplish by work the grace that they have taken in the baptism, by the ensample of sweet Jesus Christ. Then entered the Holy Virgin into her cell the Sunday before the said feast, and abode there as recluse into the Thursday, absolute in waking, in prayers, in tastings and orisons. Thither came a woman to see her, more for curiosity than for good faith, and therefore God punished her, for as soon as she approached the door of the cell she lost her sight and became blind, but the holy maid by her bonarity, and by her prayer got her sight again, and by the sign of the holy cross, when she issued out of her cell in the end of Lent. In the time that the city of Paris was a siege by the term of ten years, like as the ancient histories rehearse, there followed so great famine and hunger that many died for hunger. The Holy Virgin, that pity constrained her, went to the Saini for to go fetch by ship some victuals. When she came unto a place of Saini, where as of custom ships were wont to perish, she made the ship to be drawn to the rivage and commanded to cut down a tree that was in the water, and she set Lear to prayer. Then, as the ship should have smitten upon the tree it fell down, and two wild heads, gray and horrible, issued thur out, which stank so sore that the people there were envenomed by the space of two hours, and never after perished ship there, thank be to God and to his holy saint. Unto Arcee, the castle, went this holy virgin, 
And there came against her a great lord which required her that she should visit his wife, which had at long time the palsy. The Holy Virgin went and visited her which had been long sick, with prayers and orisons, and after, blessed her with the sign of the cross, and commanded her that she should arise. She then, that had been four years sick and might not help herself, arose, which seeing, all the people thanked our Lord. From Arce she went to Troyes in Champagne. The people came to meet with her, and offered to her great multitude of sick people without number. She blessed them and signed them with the sign of the cross, and incontinent they were healed in the sight of all the people, which marveled much and rendered thankings to our Lord. There was brought to her a man, which by the punition of God was made blind, because he wrought on the Sunday. And a blind maid also. The Holy Virgin blessed them in the name of the Father, and Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and Anne in their sight was restored to them. There was a subdeacon present and saw this. He went and fetched a child which had been sick ten years of the fever's right sore. The Holy Virgin did do bring holy water and blessed it and gave him drink, and that done, by the grace of God, the child was in good health. In this time many took up the cuttings of her vesture by devotion, whereof many sick were healed, and many vexed by spirits were delivered and remissed into their good mind. From Arcee returned the Holy Virgin to Paris with eleven ships charged with vittle. Wind, tempest, and orage assailed them so strongly that they weaned to have perished without remedy. The Holy Virgin lift up her hands to heaven requiring help of our Lord, and Anne and the tempest ceased. Then Bessus, a priest that was present and saw it, which before had trembled for fear, began to sing for joy, Cantimus Domino Glorios. All that there were thanked our Lord that had saved them by the prayer of the damsel Genevieve. When the goods came to Paris that she had brought, she departed them and gave for the love of God to some poor, wool, and to others whole loaves of bread, and sometimes she so hasted for pity that she took the loaves what out of the oven secretly and gave it to the poor. The women marveled why she took their loaves, but they spake any said nothing, and they much doubted that they should not find their count any tale. But notwithstanding that she had so taken, by the grace of God they found all their loaves and lacked none, by the merits of the holy saint. Her hope was nothing in worldly things, but in heavenly, for in the holy scriptures that saith, Whoso giveth to the poor lendeth for a veil. The reward which they received that give to poor people, the Holy Ghost had showed to her long to fore, and therefore she ceased not to weep, to adore, and to do works of pity, for she knew well that she was none other in this world but a pilgrim passing. There was at Moab Burgess that by the space of four years he might not hear any go, he did him be brought to the Holy Virgin which dwelt at Paris, and required her that she would restore to him his health and hearing. She touched his ears and blessed him, and Anon he was whole, and went and heard as he did before, thanking our Lord. On a time the Holy Virgin went to Orleans. A woman named Frederin was in great sorrow for her daughter that lay dying. Anon, as she wist the coming of the Holy Virgin, she went to her to St. Igon, where she found her in prayer. Frederin fell down to her feet saying, Dame Genevieve give me again Claude my daughter. When Genevieve saw the good faith of her, she said, Discomfort thee nothing, thy daughter is in health, the which by the marvelous puissance of God, at the word of the Holy Virgin, was brought from the wicket of death, and came all whole against her mother, and met with her at the portal of the house. The people thanked our Lord for this fair miracle. In the said city there was a servant culpable against his master. The holy maid prayed his master that he would forgive him his trespass. The master, as felonous and proud, deemed not to do it at her request. Then said the holy virgin, Though ye despise me, our Lord will not of me in despite. As soon as he was at home he was taken with a hot fever ague, which vexed him in such wise that he might not sleep of all the night. On the morn he came to the holy virgin, running with open mouth, like a bear of Almain, the tongue hanging out, and foaming like a boar, requiring pardon, which would give no pardon. The saints had pity on him and blessed him, and the fever left him, thus made she the master whole and the servant excused. From Orleans the holy woman went to Tours by the water of Loire, where she suffered many perils. When she arrived at Tours great poison of demoniacs came against her out of the church of St. Martin, and the spirits cried by the mouth of them that were mad and vexed, which were burnt by the merits of St. Martin and St. Genevieve, 
and the perils that the virgin had in the water of Loira, they had done it by envy. The Holy Virgin went into the church of St. Martin where she healed Nani demoniacs by prayers and by the sign of the cross, and the demoniacs said at the hour of the torment that, the fingers of the saint burnt about them as tapers and flamed with fire of heaven. Harav heard three men which kept their wives mad. They went to the church and prayed her that she would visit their wives. The Blessed Virgin, which was debonair, went and visited them and delivered them from the enemy by unction of holy oil and by prayer. And and after, it happened as she was in Horizons in a corner in the church of St. Martin that, one of the singers was so sore vexed with the enemy that he ate his members, which went out of the chancel and came straight to the Holy Virgin. The Blessed Virgin commanded the Spirit to issue out. He answered, if he issued, he would issue by the eye. She commanded that he should no longer abide any dwell there, and then he issued out an unwold he, nulled he, by the flux of the womb and left fouling sayings and tokens, and the sick man was all whole and in good mind, whereof he thanked our Lord. They of Tours honored much this blessed virgin, how well it was against her will. On a time as she was at her door she saw a maid pass by bearing a beer head of oil. She called her and asked what she bare, she answered and said, oil which she had bought. The holy maid which saw the enemy sit on the mouth of the beer head, blew on it, and the beer head break. She blessed the oil and bade the maid bear it forth safely. The people that saw this had great marvel that the enemy could not hide him, but that she perceived him, and thanked our Lord. There was brought to her a child by his friends which was dumb, blind, and lame. The Blessed Virgin anointed him with the holy oil, and the same hour he saw clearly, spake and went, and received health entirely. In the territory of Mo the holy maid did do labor a field that she had, and a storm and tempest of wind and rain arose which troubled much the workman. She lay down stretching on the earth, in orison and prayer, and our Lord showed there a fair miracle, for the rain fell on all the corn in the fields thereabout, and in her field fell not one drop. Another time as she was on the Sany there was a great tempest, and she besought God of help, and Anon it ceased in such wise that they that were present saw well that our Lord at her request and for her love made wind and rain to cease. All sick men that she anointed with holy oil devoutly, were healed and made whole. It happed so that on a time when she would have anointed a demoniac she found no oil in her ample, whereof she was so sorry that she wist not what to do, for there was no bishop present for to bless it. She lay down in orisons and prayers, beseeching God that he would deliver the man from the enemy. Our Lord showed her two fair virtues, for as soon as she arose her ample was full of oil, being in her hands of which she anointed the madman, and Anon he was delivered of the wicked spirit, which Ample, with the oil, saw the same man that wrote her life eighteen years after her decease. Many other miracles without number showed our Lord for the love of the holy and blessed saint, Saint Genevieve, the which lived in this world full of virtues and miracles more than fourscore years, and departed out of this world, and died worthily the third day of January, and was buried in the Mount of Paris called Mount Parler and is now called the Mount of St. Genevieve, in the church of St. Peter and Paul, the which, as said is at the beginning, the King Louis, sometimes called Clovis, did do make by the exhortment of this holy virgin, for the love of whom he gave grace to many prisoners at her departing. And after, there were many fair miracles which by negligence, by envy, and not wrecking, were not written, as he confessed that put her life in Latin, except to which he said in the end of his book as here followeth, Unto the sepulcher of the Holy Virgin was brought a young man that was so sick of the stone that his friends had no hope of life. In great weeping and sorrow they brought him thither requiring aid of the Holy Virgin. And in after their prayer, the stone issued, and he was forthwith all whole as he had never been sick. Another man came thither that gladly wrought on the Sunday, wherefore our Lord punished him, for his hands were so benumbed and lame that he might not work on other days. He repented him and confessed his sin, and came to the tomb of the said virgin, and there honored and prayed devoutly, and on the morn he returned all whole, praising and thanking our Lord, that by the worthy merits and prayers of the Holy Virgin, grant and give us pardon, grace, and joy perdurable. After the death of the Blessed Virgin St. Genevieve was assigned a lamp at her sepulchre in which the oil surted and sprang like water in a well or a fountain. Three fair things showed our Lord by this lamp 
for the fire and light burned continually, the oil less not any minished, and the sick people were healed there. Thus wrought our Lord by the merits of the Blessed Virgin corporally, which much more abundantly worketh by her merits to the souls spiritually. Many more miracles hath our Lord showed at her sepulchre, which be not here written, for it would be overlong to remember them all, and yet daily be showed, wherefore in every necessity and need let us call on this glorious saint, the blessed Genevieve, that she beamed diatrix unto God for us wretched sinners, that we may so live and amend us in this present life that we may come when we shall depart hence by her merits into the life perdurable in heaven. Amen.